What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff, and in this video I want to check out the best way to expose a Cinetone. I'm going to check out how to do skin tones, landscapes, and more. It's time for me to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, everything mentioned in this video I've popped in the description box below, and of course, this isn't sponsored content, so your support means a lot to me. It'd be good if you could hit that notification bell next to your subscribe button, it just makes a big difference to the channel, plus it means you won't miss a video. Let's get on with it. So I want to start by exposing Acinetone for skin tones. After all, good looking skin tones, that's Acinetone's purpose. Acinetone has high contrast in the low luminance levels, and it has low contrast in the high luminance levels. And similarly, you get progressively more saturation the darker your luminance levels. So in theory, if we expose brightly, we'll have lower contrast, lower saturation skin tones. If we expose darker, we'll get high contrast, high saturation. Let's see what it looks like. Starting out nice and bright, we've got our skin tones exposed all the way up at around 85%. Of course, this is far brighter than we would usually expose skin tones, but I was really pleasantly surprised how good they look. Yes, they are lacking colour and contrast, it definitely looks too soft for my liking. There are also some really hot spots you can see, but for 85%, pretty good. Dropping down to 80% and this has made a noticeable improvement. We've got more colour and the hot spots are less pronounced. Just to note, it is worth adjusting your exposure either up or down depending on your subject's skin tone. Let's face it though, you're probably going to want to adjust it up a little bit because I'm a fairly pasty Brit. Anyway, now let's fast forward it a bit to find the sweet spot for pasty Brit skin tones. Now down to around 72% and it's definitely improving. Now just under 65 and it's starting to look much more natural. The hot spots are all but gone and we've got a lot more contrast. At just over 55%, this I would say is the most flattering so far. Actually makes my skin tones look better than they do in real life. At around 47%, this to me I think has gone a little too far. This is way more colour than my face normally has, so it is adding lots of saturation here. And then the lowest I was prepared to go at just under 40%, we can see there's lots of contrast, lots of saturation, and I look almost like I'm blushing or something. So the sweet spot for pasty Brit tones is somewhere between 65 and 45%, depending on the kind of look you're going for. Personally, I'm always going to be aiming between 50 and 55% for my skin tones. Next, let's see what happens when we expose landscapes. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the highlight versus shadow levels to see what looks best. Let's do it. Starting again with stupidly overexposed, and one thing to note about Acinetone is it outputs at 109%. So the highlights in the shot are completely blown out, as in beyond 109%. We've lost a lot of detail and there's no recovering from this. Exposing a stop lower has improved things massively. Our highlights are just kind of tickling 109 and there's loads more information there. Still, I'm sure you'll agree this is still unacceptable. The highlight areas still look really blown out, and the image generally just looks really washed out and desaturated. Dropping our exposure down another stop has improved things further. The highlights are now down to 98%, and the shadows now down to 5%. Now that a lot of our image is sat around 25-50%, to we're seeing a lot more saturation, and that's due to the way the s Cinetone adds saturation the lower your luminance levels. Dropping down another stop, and now our image is starting to actually look a little bit dark. The highlights are set at around 85%, but the bulk of our image is sat at around 25%, which is why we're noticing even more saturation, but it does look a little bit dull. To me, this screams of an image that needs stretching out. Dropping down one final stop, and you can see our highlights are just tickling 65%, and the bulk of our image is now below 25%. Yes, it looks dark and pretty underexposed, but if I zoom in, you can see the key thing here is the amount of detail in the skyline. I'll go into this in a bit, but I suspect we can take this image and give it a little grade and stretch it out and we can get it looking really good. So for me, when filming this type of scene, I'm setting my zebras for around 75%. That should protect my highlights and give me plenty of lovely saturation in the shadow areas. But what about low light? Well, luckily, Cinetone is actually a really good profile to use for low light situations. And the best news, it's a pretty easy formula to getting a good exposure. So starting with pretty standard settings in an extremely low light situation, F4, 
ISO 100. The first thing to do, of course, is to grab your widest aperture lens. And there we go, better already. But if you're shooting in extremely low light situations like this, you may want to go up to your Sony camera's second higher native ISO, which is always 20 times your base ISO. So stepping up to ISO 2000 and we've got this. And honestly, I think it's gone too far. This is actually too bright. The areas of the green screen and the orange buttons are almost blowing out. So really don't worry, s Cinetone is great for low light situations. s Cinetone, in my opinion, is not a profile where you can just shoot and then publish, which I think is the reputation Sony would like it to have. I still think it needs a little bit of grading to look its best. Let me show you what I mean. So I've taken the lowest exposed of our landscape shots, the one where the highlights were just tickling 65%. And once I gave it a little grade, I managed to get it looking like this. I'm sure you'll agree this is far better. Let me show you how I did it. Right, I'm in Final Cut, but don't worry, these techniques apply to any editing software. We've got our clip ready to go, and the first thing you might notice is there's a duplicate of it, which I've placed directly on top, but I have disabled it. And I'll explain why in just a moment. Looking at the waveform, you can see that our highlights are around 65% so I definitely want to stretch those out and I want to add some saturation so those are my two priorities. I've only applied three effects to the main clip. I've got color wheels, an instance of M film look which is for color grading and it's a great bit of software and then just the built-in vignette plugin from Final Cut. All I'm doing in my color wheels is I'm boosting the highlights just high enough until I'm happy and then I'm giving the shadows a bit of saturation. And when I switch it on, you can see the huge difference this has made. In theory, you could just leave it there and be done with it. I think it looks great already, but that's not the hard way. I want to take it even further. So within M Film Look, all I'm doing is I'm adding a subtle hint of a lookup table and then just some film grain. And if you've seen my review of this product, you'll know that this is some of the best looking film grain emulation that I've ever seen. Switching it on, you can see a fairly subtle change, but you know how it is with grading. It's those small, subtle adjustments that really add up to make a really special looking image. Lastly, I'm just going to add a subtle hint of vignette. I don't like to add any kind of blur. I only add a tiny bit of darkness around the edges just to draw you into center frame. So we could leave it there and I'd be perfectly happy. As as you can see it's made a big difference but the one thing I want to do is I want to accentuate that detail in the sky and that's what this second layer is for. When I select it you can see what I've got going on. I've got color wheels, color curves and then a graduated mask and you guessed it I'm grading the top half of the image with the sky in independently from the bottom half. Of course this technique only really works with static shots but in essence I want to see if I can copy the effect of a graduated filter. In my color wheels, you can see I've done things slightly differently. I've brought the exposure down, I've brought the highlights up and the shadows up, and I've added some saturation to the highlights. But the real trick to this technique is to use color curves. And the way I've done it is I've added lots of control points and I've brought out all the detail I possibly can in the sky. Note that these may look like quite aggressive moves, but I have dialed down the mix to 50%. And of course, lastly, I've got the graduated mask. With the bottom layer disabled, you can see where the mask starts, just below the horizon so it fades in nicely. When I switch everything on, it has a huge effect on the skyline. It's really noticeable when we zoom in, especially when switching it on and off. All that extra detail in the clouds, I just love it. And that's how I went from this dull, underexposed shot and turned it into this vibrant, dynamic looking vista. So it's definitely fine to protect your highlights when shooting outdoors using S Cinetone. Right now I want to draw some conclusions and encapsulate them into some top tips just for you. The Sony exposure meter on the rear screen is terrible as always and I want you to always not look at it. Instead, use an external monitor with a waveform if you can. Failing that, I would trust your gut because you are way smarter than Sony's exposure meter. In my testing, I preferred skin tones at around 50%, but depending on the situation, you could even go up to around 70 if you wanted to. Remember, you can always set your zebras to your target skin tone level. This way, you can nail it every single time. Obviously, these figures can vary massively depending on the subject's skin tones. As for landscapes, I found that you really need to expose to protect highlights. Again, completely ignore the Sony exposure meter. It's still terrible. If anything, expose slightly darker than you think you need to be. 
And of course, I don't think s Cinetone is complete without a touch of colour grading, just to bring out the best in your footage. Whether that's doing a little bit of colour correction, or just stretching out the footage a tiny bit, it's really worth it. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about this in the comments section below if you want to. I'm down there as much as I can be. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Just hang in